Hello and welcome to Patched. I'm your subject for tonight, Paul James, and I'm joined today by Damo Camilleri, who's basically <laughs> going to be flipping roles. If you saw last week's episode of Patched, where I interviewed Damo about all his gaming background, he's about to... In that to... couch warehouse. <laughs> yeah, that couch warehouse. He's about to do the same for me here. In this and couch warehouse. Pippa's going to try not to be a nuisance. And this is Pippa. You can find Pippa at pippa.com.au Twitter slash handle. Groups.facebook.com <laughs> slash dog. Um, so I'm going to turn everything over to Damo, who's going to do whatever. The, he's got something up his sleeve, I'm, I'm going to gather. Cause so we're talking gaming histories. We're going to start with Paul. So when did you realise that you are a feeble little gamer, man? Feeble? Yeah. Ah, right. even, so let's, even that let's, feeble as well before I even started playing games. Let's let's start. <laughs> what was your first console? Super Nintendo. You went for a Super? SNES, um, SNES, man? SNES? That SNES, was... SNES? SNES? Yeah. Um, SNES. But anyway. Um, that was a thing from... Jeez, when I was like three or four. I played... Uh, first game was Super Mario All-Stars. Oh, good yeah. Way, good place yeah. to start. Um, yeah, if you're gonna start with something, start with a classic. Yeah, that was it. Was just a Christmas classic. Classics. Oh, maybe not three or four. Maybe maybe yeah, about four to five years old, I guess. Um, so early nineties. Um, so you would have played Lost Worlds and went fuck this. And no, I, I didn't. Um, oh yeah, Lost Worlds. Yeah, um, I didn't get to play Super Mario World. That was one that until, yeah. until like the Wii came out and we had the Virtual Console. That was one that I'd never actually got to experience properly myself. And it had to be it had to be a port, you know, in terms of what was on the way for me to actually get to play it. So, yeah, that's fair. There wasn't something. Um, I always, when I read Super Mario World, I always thought it was Yoshi. Like that was the one with Yoshi in it. That was oh, like, Yoshi's Island. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah, no, I completely missed Super Mario World. Uh, I yeah did play All Stars. I did play Yoshi's Island. I spent, look, the, the Super Nintendo to me is still, and maybe it's, I guess, I don't know, kiddie lenses, nostalgia sort of thing kicking in, but um, for me, Super Nintendo is still the best console there ever was, you know, or will be. Um, and I mean, but for me, that's because, and you guys probably don't see it too much when it comes to some of our podcasts, because Jay's kind of got a little rule when it comes to video games clubs that uh, we can't do JRPGs because they just take too long for us to play in the lead up to each. Well, that's why we're trying to play at the moment games that we've all kind of played so we can get like yeah, get a ahead, leg get up a, so get that we could have bit, like and, um, a... And it buys us a little bit of time for something like that. Like it's, it'll never be a thing that we do all the time, but it'd be nice. One every JRP now. Because, be... because for me personally, like so much of my gaming background, like a lot of my history games wise is around RPGs or Japanese RPGs more specifically. And so when it comes to selecting games for Games Club, I'm already like, oh, shit, what do I do next? I, like I'm, I'm starting to kind of run out of ideas because for me it was all about Earthbound and Chrono Trigger and I mean, like I got to play Mario and Zelda and those sorts of things. We don't to play Chrono Trigger. Um, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, which I guess that was one of our first Games Club games but that was you know a lot shorter than your typical Japanese RPG yeah um, and like some of those games I just played over and over and over again and, and then um, yeah specifically Final Fantasy and it wasn't you know I suppose I don't want to jump ahead too quickly because we want to make sure this episode kind of goes for a while but kind of extended to when the PS1 and that's the end of this episode close the book thank you um, like that kind of extended to the PS1 with when you know Final Fantasy 7 8 and yeah, and I'll talk more about nine later, I'm sure. But um, like those two generations, those two consoles in particular, are just chock full of RP- JRPGs. So I was all over it. Yeah, fair enough. That's that's fair enough. So that was your first console was the SNES. Any uh, any highlights from the SNES? Most of those RPGs that I kind of mentioned. So yep. Um, like, but, you, actually, not even thing like because everyone everyone was like, right there. There's no. As great as it was, again, the, the games weren't huge back then, so like, you know, there wasn't such the vast library that you're going to have like an indie-ish game, like stand out as much as, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. do you have any highlighted memories of Super Nintendo days? Like, is there a game that sticks out to you that you just kind of like... Oh, Chrono Trigger and Earthbound, I guess, specifically. And, oh, and I'd be remiss to not mention um, Zelda, Link to the Past. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I like I, Chrono Trigger is one that I'd throw up in my top five if someone ever asked me what games are you know my favourite games. Full stop. Chrono Trigger's up there. Yeah, you know, t- probably in the top two or three, depending on I don't know what mood you catch me on. You catch me in how recently I played The Last of Us, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I was I was a Nintendo kid for the entirety of my kind of childhood. Um, so started with, started with Super Nintendo and then just kind of continued on from there. Pip. <laughs> just sniffing at Damo's feet. <laughs> Come on. Um, but yeah, like the, I mean, it was cool to play some other bits and pieces along the way. Like I did get to play Star Fox. I never, pl- a bit like Mario World, I never played Metroid, Super Metroid, until way, way later. That was basically. I mean, actually, people remember because it was a video games club episode. We played that. I, I kind of dabbled it. little bits and pieces of it in the past, but I never kind of played in any full, you know, any depth. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's a bit of a thing, isn't it? Where you just kind of have those, like, you do the dabbles, and then you, much, much later, you come along and you actually you fully play it. Yeah. One one I really did like, and I probably kicked off, I mean, like, I love Mario, and Mario's great, but I think it was Don- the Donkey Kong Country games. So, oh, the, so yeah. the rare ones, that kind of kicked off my interest in whatever Rare did. So Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and even 3, which, like, is not perhaps quite as good as the other two, but... Um, Still, still a very play. very good game yeah, like exactly. it's still really enjoyable that kind of kicked off my love of Rare which then extended into the Nintendo 64 with you know Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64 which you know debatable because it's a massive massive collectathon. but like all those like, I just kind of followed Rare pretty closely from yeah. from that point on Diddy Kong Racing? No didn't get I didn't just one I didn't get now when I moved out and had my own my own income one of the first things I did was get a, get myself a 64 and then fill in some of those gaps so Diddy Kong 64 was one of those and like I, I got to play it at a cousin's place but I didn't get to actually play it myself yeah I mean that was the cool thing back then you know what I mean like everyone just kind of used to share or used to play you know it's like no one ever kind of had that exact same gaming collection like and I know it's like all oh, that you said about today as well but like back then it was like everyone sort of had like that handful of games and it'd always be like crossovers, like everyone had fucking like Bond and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but you, yeah, like you don't have. I guess in some ways, you know, there was that sharing stuff you're talking about then. But there's there's a fair bit of it now too, because there's just thousands and thousands of games out there all the time. That you know, we were talking last week's episode, which if you've already seen it, you'll know what I'm referring to. But like, here, demo, take a copy of Ratchet and Clank. I'll just go borrow, it, play it, go. It's <laughs> awesome. Do it. Um, you know, we've done it with the Last of Us. Like, you know. Yeah, that, that that sort of culture is really awesome, and that's why I was really when the Xbox One first got announced, I was hating it. I was like, you can't share games. That's one like, that's how I kind of came in contact with some of the best games I've ever played. It was because a mate shared it with me, or mm-hmm. or I went to a family member's place, and oh, hang on, what's this? Uh, Harvest Moon on the Super Nintendo is one I adore still, and that was because I was in auntie's place and they had it, and I played it. And like I would borrow it over and over and over again. I never got it. I never got into Harvest Moon. I just don't understand. Just don't. Adore it, but then piss that Farmville rubbish off. Any of those Zynga sort of phone wannabes. Amen. But anyway, so you started on the Super Nintendo. Did you have any... Before you moved on to your next console, did you have a Game Boy or Game oh, Boy yeah, Color yeah. or anything like that? Um, so got to play, you know, one of your favourite games, uh, Link's Awakening. Ah, um, yeah. Super Mario Land. Pip is destroying one of her toys over there. That's great. Um, so distracted. Oh, I look, about, I look over I and I... not care about you, precious few ones I, I right look now. over and I see this little pink elephant that we bought her a week ago. Stomach being ripped out piece by piece. Pippa, come here. Um, see, look, I mean, look at, look at her. Ah! There's, there's a bit of foam hanging from her net mouth right now. Give me that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, look, uh, Game Boy. Yeah, played a fair bit of the. Uh, are you talking specifically the the old, you know, the the original one, the big the big brick thing, or the? Oh no! Did you say so you obviously did you have that? Uh, I did you have a Game Boy. We, we had to the we had one of those big original brick ones, um, and I was happily playing that for basically anything that came out, um, including Pokemon, even when that came along. There's still more. Come on, dog. Um. Oh look. Uh, so, look, Pokemon was massive for me when it came to the Game Boy. Um, yeah, I think everyone kind of had a yeah, big... Yeah, it's tens of millions of copies. 
Seems old, so. kind of really strange was around that time in Australia was when internet also started becoming a bit more common in people's yeah. homes. And so it was like everyone started looking up, you know, Pokemon, like, what would you do like this? And all of a sudden, the missing no cheat. Or, everyone knew about or the, the missing or the, or the rumors of how you get new... Which I mean, there's you know there's a legit way to be able to do it in there, but yeah, like but that the, one that the, the everyone used strength the to push thing. the truck. Yeah, yeah, it's like you can't have access to strength or surf at that like time. Yeah, it's not actually possible. Use cut on the tires or something like that as well. Yeah, like yeah. it's all that dumb shit. But yeah, it was crazy. fake news. Fake news. <laughs> fake news. Started back when Pokemon days. They're the bastards writing, writing BuzzFeed articles now. Yeah. But like, I mean, I didn't have a huge number of games I played on the. I mean, to go, I guess, to go back to Harvest Moon again. Harvest Moon Two on the Game Boy Color was like I stand by that as one of my favourites. Well, like one of my favourite games, kind of full stop. Certainly the best for that particular franchise. She she cannot settle at the moment. It's fair enough. She's not been present for one of our podcasts in a while, so. Um, <laughs> and she's got a toy that she wants to disembowel over there. But um, yeah, Harvest Moon adored. But and that was probably one of the ones that got the most. Game time for me on the on the Game Boy just because you know in many ways it kind of never ends. Yeah. Um. And I, like I continued to dabble in handhelds a little bit, but I don't know. Like even you know Zelda for as much as I like it, there's a bunch of Zeldas that came out on various handheld things, be it you know the original Game Boy all the way through to the the DS or even 3DS. No, actually all the 3DS ones I've played, but. Like, the, you know, there's Zelda games I miss just because I never kind of really got into the big handheld thing. I still love playing games on a TV at the end of the day. Yep. Um, to the point where, like, some of those Game Boy games, say your Harvest Moons and that sort of thing, I got the, the Super Key for my Super Nintendo that allowed you to, like, you just pop the cartridge in the top oh, of the Game Boy. Oh, yeah, And yeah. you could play your, uh, your Game Boy games on the TV. Everybody would froth and yell, you know, Pokemon on the TV. Yeah, and I, like, I love doing that. The only time I really put it in the Game Boy is if I needed to trade with someone. Yeah. All right, I'll save it. Pop in the Game Boy. Paul trade. probably had was that kid that had like three Game Boys at home and just traded with the, like you know began the game fifty billion times to get the three starters. Well, look, it, it was kind of cool that both forty times each. But that both sisters were, or one of them was too young at the time, but both sisters were kind of right into Pokemon, so we'd kind of you know whenever it, whenever each game came out, be it red and blue, gold and silver, and everything else that came out, kind of fill your decks. The, the, yeah, fill like get the starters. We kind of tell, and I most typically do the the heavy lifting. But um, I'll keep restarting this game. I'll keep trading to you. Then once we've got all this, like enough for all of us, we'll start trading and back and that sort of thing. So, yeah, and then we'd start the adventure properly from Pidgeys there. and Rattatas yeah. just going everywhere. Um, and you know, I guess I still even to this day kind of do that to an extent with you know X and Y or Sun and Moon or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Stop it. Um, so, yeah. So, you're obviously not a huge handhelder, but then you moved on to, I'm guessing, PlayStation before you had a 64? No, 64 came first. So I was Ooh. Nintendo kid through and through it's for years and years. Um, so, Super Mario 64 was first. And was that about Zelda the time you started writing for Hyper Magazine? No, we're not quite there yet. Any <laughs> Hyper guys? Um, <laughs> But I know what you're. Still even I, I know. I know what you're alluding to. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Ken, Ken and some of the guys from the here. site kind of dabble with the work with hyper a little bit. But um, yeah, no, the Mario sixty four, Mario Kart sixty four, and Ocarina of Time, and Dora's Mask, and all those sort of things. There was like I, I spent a ton of t- Pokemon Stadium. Uh, there was there was a ton of stuff that I kind of spent a lot of time with on the sixty four. Um, and at that point, I've heard about what Super Metroid was and all that sort of stuff for the Super Nintendo. I was really hoping that something would come for the 64. It never did, Nintendo. Never did. Not good enough. Um, there was no Metroid on the 64, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, yeah, um, that's true. GoldenEye, that was... that. The 64 was where I kind of first got introduced to first-person shooters. I didn't... You know, in stark contrast to you when it came to, you know, what we're talking about in your episode. <laughs> P- PC games were just not a thing that I kind of did at all. Um, so, give me that. There we go. No more dead animals. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I didn't play, Do- didn't get to play Doom. I had a couple of friends late primary school years where the, like I'd kind of go around and I got to see Doom and Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein oh, Wolfenstein! I should have brought that up in my episode. I love that. And, and kind of try a few of those out, but I didn't actually get to really play one myself until like like kind of later sixty four years with with Goldeneye and Perfect Dark and. Um, 
and then mum bought Doom 64. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, okay, cool. This is, this is, this is Doom, right. Yeah, um, it's crazy. Uh, and, yeah, like a few of those mature games, like Two Rock and those sorts of things that all came across. Two Rock. Pet, come on. Stop. He, he, he likes his <laughs> balls together, not stomped on. Uh, I'm going to die by the end um, of that, people. So... Like yeah, that, that was kind of where I got introduced to first-person shooters, but even then they didn't really stick with me again until the PS3 kind of era. Oh, it yeah. Still, it was still all about Fuck RPGs. Stop and jumping like, ahead of things. Stick to your question. It was still all about So you were on the RPGs. 64. It was still was there all any about... highlights of the 64 oh, apart Ocarina. from Zelda? Yeah, uh, apart from Ocarina, I mean, yeah, the Mario 64, Mario Kart, they were all the ones, and Smash. They were the ones that all Oh, yes, yeah, when Smash <laughs> came out, shit, that I changed totally, a lot. I totally of... forgot Smash, but that yeah, Smash changed a lot of people's... That's still a big game changer. Where do you keep getting this? I've got the toy. Damn, dog. Think about a dog. Um, this is this will be entertaining for everyone. <laughs> Come on, get out of the way. Um, good girl. Uh, so <laughs> this is the nice little little aside to the whole thing. Um, yeah, look, Smash was a big game changer there, um, and I stuck with Smash through every Nintendo system. Yeah, since. I don't think anyone's ever dropped a Smash once once they played one. And yeah, it's like. But at the same time, Unless like you're, a, you know, one of those people that like me and skip the GameCube, <laughs> which is you know is the probably the best Smash game if you speak to some you know some people. About yeah, it. it's the basis of like a lot of the tournament stuff is based still from. Melee. Yeah, from melee. Um, so basically, the, the the 64 thing, like it was flying. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And then I walked into that, like I. I'd gotten home from school one day and I'd kind of dropped my bags and all that sort of stuff and then I walked into the, the lounge room and all of a sudden there was a PS1 sitting there mum's plugged it in and she's starting to play Final Fantasy 7 I'm like, what the hell's this? What, 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 what? <laughs> and instantly mum never got to play Final Fantasy 7 again because I was just consumed by the whole thing. Like, you know, I was trying to work out for the longest time because at this point, you know, I didn't really collect many gaming magazines the internet wasn't like you know be, having big you know your game spots and IGN yeah. well, wasn't really that wasn't really a thing to this point for me anyway um, so no it, wasn't it, it a... took a while like I, I had no idea that I was just figured okay Final Fantasy 7 coming I'm sure at some point come on come on where the hell is it um, she's real destructive at the moment but, uh, right. uh, but then yeah like I find mum playing it on PS1 I'm like what the hell all right cool awesome and then I was completely consumed by it and and then all the RPGs that came out for that like it was just this very abrupt end to kind of my love of the 64 I still love the console and you know if, like when Banjo Tui and those sorts of things come along I would go back and play and one off but very quickly it was basically from that moment onwards where Nintendo consoles were my my number two console in the house oh wow what a conversion behind, behind PlayStation that's always been behind PlayStation Xbox has kind of not been here's a Bufuzler card 66 conversions no 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 it doesn't no, really it's move it. references I didn't pick that. I didn't pick that one. Yeah, there's a little Rookley card, whatever. So, is that your next console? Was it? Yeah, so PS1 you jumped was, across to the PS1, PS1 and things just everything changed your um, life. Yeah, you know, we spoke about in your episode, but you know, being able to pirate games, we don't condone it. It was a horrible, horrible thing. You shouldn't have done it. Don't do it these days. PC games are awesome. Look after them. Oh, PC games aren't awesome, but look after them anyway. Um, uh, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, I've got a ton of burnt games and my auntie knew a guy who just kind of, he just, he would give her big multi-page lists of here's the things that I can uh, do. Oh yeah, I remember, I remember those lists. You'd go through them and you didn't even know what half the games were. Well, mum just, anything that sounded like it was a Japanese role-playing game, mum just, yeah, I have one of those, I have one of those, I have one of those. There was some ridiculous stuff in there. There was great things like Final Fantasy 8 and 9, we got, uh, 9 specifically, we got burnt, um... And there was other cool little little, little known things like Luna Silver Star story, but then there was just some really weird abstract things that I you probably see similar sort of things pop up on the Vita and the PSP and you know the the 3DS Steam. those sorts of things yeah and some Steam sort of stuff Steam, now all the time Steam but back then like I, I would never Pigeon dating simulator oh hateful boyfriend or whatever it is <laughs> um yeah probably equivalent sort of things to that and to me I was like nope this is nope this is not my sort of rpg and just put all them to the side and kept 
just kept playing and played Final, played Final Fantasy, Fantasy and IX Dragon for the Dragon tenth Quest? time. That... Dragon Quest hadn't really been big in the in the West at that point. It was Dragon Quest Eight on the PS2 that kind of oh, kicked off. That's well, right. Try to get me to play that, but um, did not play that. So yeah, it was it was still all about Final Fantasy, and that's like where I kind of came, came across Final Fantasy IX, which is still to this day my favourite game. Full stop. Mm. Um, I, I must have played that a dozen times through a few times 100% it. Square Enix can you like do what you did to Final Fantasy 7 put it on the PS4 give it trophies man will I devour that game it's the franchise's 30th anniversary this year oh, I don't know if anyone heard that but I'm glad they probably didn't um Chrono Cross, like, so there was some, there was some sort of games that, uh, some RPGs that didn't make it across the US, but because you had yeah. the chip in your PlayStation, region codes and that sort of thing weren't a factor. Yeah, it was like, so, oh, pal, it's like, who didn't cares? matter, you just burnt it. Uh, and that was one of, like, I'll still look back and I'll, I'll, for all that technically it was doing the wrong thing, I'll never, uh, be ashamed of getting the chip or feel guilty for getting one because at the end of the day there was games that I could never have otherwise played yeah. if it weren't for the, having that chip in there. What about Ape, Ape Escape? Do you ever play Ape Escape? No, nah, that was something that kind of missed me. Like I, a lot of the platformers on that kind of dropped off for the most part. Yeah. I got to play Spyro, um, Crash, If anyone can Croc. lend me a copy of Ape Escape for PS4, that'd be lovely. Just putting it out there. I feel like there was an Ape Escape that was released for PS4 yeah, I think or something. Yeah, it was I the first one though. No, because that was a PS1 game, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was still mostly RPGs with a few platformers along the way. Um, but again, like guns and those sort of things that now like are you know, just kind of part of what, a lot of the things I play that wasn't really, wasn't really a factor at all at that point. So yeah. I would just keep smashing through my Final Fantasy. And that's why like, you know, uh, one of the best things for me about what we do with, um, the games club and. And all those sort of things has been has been some of the stuff that you guys get some of you guys have introduced to me because I was so I pl- I spent a lot of time in my little niche, my JRPG sort of niche, that um, I didn't I didn't get to try out a lot of this cool stuff that you guys kind of did. The Castlevanias and those sorts that- of things that I just never went in went anywhere. Go near. over there. Come on, just sit with ragdoll sit physics. This is an annoying dog at the moment. Um, so yeah, there was there was a lot of cool stuff that I that you guys have introduced to me in the years since that I just never encountered because yeah, I was kind of in my little shelter and and mum perhaps didn't even necessarily help in that regard because of the fact that she liked him. Yeah, well, because she liked him too. So we were just this big. Who are your children? We were just this big J- JRPG sort of family, yeah. and that was awesome. I still yeah, like again, no regrets. But it was good to be at, with the chip. It was good to be able to play. Chrono Cross and um, Legend of Mana and a few of those others that just never, oh, were, yeah, never were never allowed or never released. Sorry, in um, yeah. in Australia or Europe or any, anything like that. Um, I don't even know if Dragon Quest Seven was actually released PS One in America. I think it might have only been Japan. There's been ports to DSs and all those sorts of things since. This dog. So you would have had. Dog. So at that stage, Game Boy Advance came out. Was anything on the Game Boy Advance? I tried some of the Advance Wars games. Oh, yeah. Which was, okay, that's kind of my first sort of exposure to tactical games. I played Golden Sun, some more RPGs, Zelda, yep. Mario. Like Again, it was pretty stock standard Pokemon. It was kind of what you would expect for the most part. It was oh, a lot yeah. of the Nintendo IP that I kind of went towards, and then there wasn't that much else. I did play... There was two Dragon Ball Z games on the, on the DS. Legacy of Goku and Le- Legacy of Goku 2. They were real cool, but they were kind of almost JRPG in some respects as well, so that's probably what got me in. Look them up. If you haven't had a chance, look them up. They were really kind of cool. But I think I may have played it. The first one I did have on the GBA, the second one I emulated. I think, um, yeah, I emulated... I think... It, oh, I don't know. No, this might have been, one, this dive might, into this like might been one of those ones that I kind of recommended for you. Because by this stage, you know, GBA, that sort of thing, like... We probably know each other by this stage. When we're talking GBA, because that's kind of no, I know because I had Doom on GBA, so I was still friends with Paul BD. So more shoutouts. Yeah, um, GBA came out in like 
when I was in like it had eight, really long it had really long legs though the GBA it did that that it was very that long. was one of the so big things like, there was so many of those sort of things like just, and they'd bring out the SP which everyone loved because of course you could actually see what was going on the screen now oh was that backlit yeah that was backlit so hmm. you know the kind of the flip lid one the yeah. clamshell sort of thing um, so that that was really cool. I didn't like. I still had the original GBA, but Mum had bought herself an SP. So we'd kind of, if she wasn't using it, we'd steal her uh, hers and play our games on that. And then just if she decided she wanted to take the game out, pop it back and go back to squinting and trying to get the machine in the right light. But um, ah, oh, dim days. But even then, like kind of um, for the same sort of reasons we were talking about before, I was a console guy at the end of the day. So I, I would you know always pick the GameCube or the PS2 or you know, yeah, so we, that's where we jumped to, don't we? Did you GameCube or PS2? GameCube was still first, yeah, uh, and that's because at that point I didn't like I wasn't earning anything. I was still, jeez, oh, I would have been like twelve or something like that. Still at at that stage, so um, I couldn't, you know, buy my. Own, I didn't have the money to buy my own consoles, and I didn't have enough sway with Mum to convince her to go to go PlayStation first. Twelve years see. old, and you couldn't afford anything. What kind of country do we live in, people? think about it um so we picked up the gamecube i think it would have been launch day um but i wouldn't have seen it till that christmas um and got luigi's mansion yeah. which i love mario sunshine you know the metroid uh, metroid prime when that came out finally my first metroid game um wind waker when that came along smash mario kart Again, it was pretty much what you'd expect. It was the it was the Nintendo first party machine for for the most part. Yeah, which is good. I w- wouldn't complain. But at that point, like I'm seeing Final Fantasy X come across to play uh, to be on you know being on PS2 and and Dragon Quest VIII was not far off on the horizon and and all those sorts of games starting to come out and I'm like, Mom, come on, this is where the RPGs are at. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Um, so then it was a that was the PS2 was a Christmas present. Paul is that like meme guy where he's like sitting there. Like, <sighs> well, look, it it took a fair few years to convince her. Like the PS2 would have been out for th- at least three years, I think, before I finally convinced her that yeah. it was worth getting one. And she got me the uh, Prince of Persia Sands of Time bundle console. Oh yeah, which was which was pretty cool. Um, and I really liked that. And that was kind of my first probably action adventure sort of game. It's not RPGs. Like it was, I guess, more what we think about when we think action adventure sort of games these days. Um, so that, like, that was that was a cool, different thing. But action adventure games. I've never played a Zelda before. Well, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, I did. Sorry, forgetting Zelda. Zelda's still got a lot of elements yeah, of RPG. Yeah, it's different. In it, yeah, it's very different is, from. It's almost a platformy action adventure in a sense, you know, with the. Go get it. Get it. Get it. Get the dog. She's ruining cords. Um, so, yeah, look, they, they kicked that off. I, you know, got to play Final Fantasy X was basically launched for PS2, and I'd had a few friends talking about that at school for a while, so I was glad to kind of finally get to play that myself. They've been ranting and raving about that, and I'm going, oh, I love Final Fantasy IX, I'd love to play X, but couldn't. Um, <laughs> so you played nine again. That was kind of that was kind of on a loop, over and over. Once I got ten, ten two. So that was kind of what a, a direct sequel to a ten game, uh, yeah. a Final Fantasy game. Ten was okay. She is destructive as hell tonight. Uh, anyway, Sad. she's just trying to you know terrorize all you guys on the other side of the camera here. Just letting you know who's the. Don't alpha. come to my house because look out, this this spoodle's gonna wreck you. Um, she's, she's, fi- she's finally run out of steam there we go it's over um, so yeah the Prince of Persia games God of War which is something we spoke about in our thing like, but that, by that point I'd met you so yeah um, oh, oh, so yeah this is PS2 we met each other how I met your host um, what did I play Ratchet and Clank uh, Jack and Daxter yep a oh, yeah, bunch Jack of those Dax. sort of games it, you know, just meeting you and and a few others, where I started. Oh, you know, maybe I'll try this Devil May Cry thing. And um, oh yeah, that was that was a thing, wasn't it? Gonna yeah, that that was a big thing for a while there with a, uh, with a few within the group. Um, but it was still mostly all about RPGs. It was yeah, it was it was the next generation where I finally kind of broadened my horizons a lot more. 
Yeah. We, we'd, like, we'd always had a PC on the side and it could always play, it, but it was always underpowered. Yeah. Like, it was, it was your... You never we'll got go an emulation? Hard. Like, you never got bored enough? To, I suppose oh, you like, a, yeah, emulation. You I never really it. threw out your consoles, though, did you? Oh, I still don't. Like, I'll, yeah, so I'll, that was I'll like, put things away and, like, I don't trade games, I don't trade consoles, I, yeah. I hoard everything. Unless it was SingStar. Well, yeah, that needs to go. Um, yeah, look, the, the, um, the PS2 did eventually get... Tri- <laughs> that was the one time where I kind of fl- and I guess wasn't old enough I kind of didn't really get history so much like I had all my games that I wanted so no big deal if I trade in the PS2 to get a PS3 yeah um, especially given the PS3 I got was backwards compatible but it died with the yellow light of death so that so it also died my backwards compatibility after about three or four years yeah you can pick up a PlayStation 2 for like yeah, you can, yeah for 20 50 bucks, bucks somewhere somewhere. probably so uh, that's no big deal in fact I bought one for mum I took I took the PS3 that I bought in replacement for her left uh, left the old one and bought her a PS2 and she ended up getting a new PS3 at some point but yeah. like it was it was yeah PS3 sort of era where um I was in, you know, old enough to get a job and I mean, we'd finished school old enough to get a job I'm actually getting some money in so it wasn't that was why I was able to kind of broaden my horizons a bit because I didn't just have to get JRPGs which was good because there wasn't that many of them in that particular year and not many good ones anyway yeah um, Final Fantasy 13 was a massive disappointment that was I still remember the, the E3 and we've spoken about it I think in some patched episodes in the past but there was the, the E3 where are you familiar with this story? So, when it comes to Final Fantasy Thirteen, um, oh, so 13, I, I'd, I'd been versus. I'd been watching E three at home. I've been using MSN Messenger, talking to Jay the whole the whole time about sort of things were going up. I was watching the Xbox conference. Didn't have an Xbox, but I want like I always like to know. No. Yeah, this is like three o'clock in the morning. I've got the computer. MSN. <laughs> I've got <laughs> how I've got, old this shit is. I've got the computer in. Um, in the study which is directly against the wall to mum and dad's bedroom with their bed kind of their head their heads would have been technically you know as the bird flies like two meters away from where i was sitting for hours and hours and um all of a sudden like you know the xbox conference is you know good there seems to be some pretty good stuff I'm like, oh, okay 360 like it's got some rpgs is pretty cool square enix is out there and, oh yeah i've not heard about last remnant infinite undiscovery some of the worst names for games you've ever heard we go okay they're getting some jrpgs hmm maybe i should get an xbox this is like i'm finding it hard to argue this and then um uh they've just wrapped up and square enix have all disappeared and then all of a sudden yoichi wada who was the the head of the company at the time kind of wanders out and gives a little tap on the shoulder and he's like, oh actually I've got one more thing that I want to show and you know he kind of brings up the screen and all of a sudden I'm seeing Final Fantasy 13 and I've just gone ah! and just started smacking tables get this is anger not not happiness because I was a stupid little fanboy um, back in those days it was I hate Xbox Xbox is crap blah 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 all that goodwill that they'd built up with the last remnant and all these other RPGs went out the window the moment I heard Final Fantasy was coming across it was like it was just stupid childish behavior but i like instantly i heard like there was this thump from uh, through the wall from dagger go to bed because <laughs> i you know i'd be well, old woke, enough to you I'd, know, wo- I'd woken them up by smashing the table young. oh this was like three o'clock in the morning yeah and i've just smashed on the the table in anger woken them up <laughs> go to bed that's it it's over Thankfully, that was the end of the conference. I spat the dummy and just grumped all my way back to my bedroom and soaked up a storm. But, um, so that kind of set back my time with the Xbox fr- uh, family, I guess, a few years because I just, I was stupid and childish about it. Um, so I missed things like Halo. I missed things like Gears for a while. I, I just, I hated Halo because it was on Xbox, not because I'd played it. Not because I really knew that much. I knew it was a shooter, but oh, wait, not yeah, that I knew that much PS2 about it. PS2 was out for a while, and then the Xbox. Yeah, there was came a, along. yeah the yeah the Xbox came along, and the PlayStation Three didn't come for another yeah, you just, year and you a just bit got, Yeah, that. So the Xbox had been, I, I the that, had been out for a while. You um, kind of sit there and you just like you just hating on it. You're just like, man, I don't like Halo. Fuck Halo. And then you're playing like this is okay. I don't know why. Rave about it's on PlayStation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I was always happy. Like, I've got my Final Fantasies. I'll always be happy. And then there was that moment with 13, which I think would have been like E3 2007, maybe, where all this anger came pouring out for no 
stu- no logical reason. It was it was dumb. Paul Farley um, puberty. But then 2008 was when I picked up a 360 because I I, I don't know. Someone just Paul sit there, shut up, don't don't comment, don't say anything, just sit and watch this. And they showed me footage for Gears 2, and they go, okay, so now, what do, what do you think? Like, what do you think of the game? Go, oh, it looks great. Do you know it's on Xbox? Like, it's Xbox 360 only? I'm like, oh. Yes, yeah, so you got the Elite or something. Yeah. yeah. So I, I finally, the okay, that's it. Get the better. I was like, finally, that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get an Xbox. Uh, this looks awesome. I saw Fable 2. I'm like, that looks awesome. I'll get them, I'll get them all, all together. So I picked up the, I picked up the Elite bundle that had, had, the original Gears, Halo 3, and Mass Effect in it. How's that for it? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's pretty... Like, that was an awesome bundle. That's pretty dumb and of. And then, and then at the same time, I picked up a couple of little others along the way. Um, because the 360 was backward compatible, I picked up the original Fable and played that. Picked up Halo 1, 2, because I thought... Yeah, I remember... I've got you, I three, think I'm going to play three, so why not? I think you actually started collecting games before She's you even had She's now destroying your... her bed. That's fine. Calm down. I don't know how to put a leash on you. Shut up. Um, yeah, I think you actually started collecting games before you even had your Xbox. I think you started going around, like, if you saw an Xbox game, like Xbox, not 360, you were picking up those Xbox games because you were like, they were obviously pre-owned and stuff like that, but you were like, I need this just in case I can never get this again. Like, you were, you were preemptively, like... Yeah, but like, once once I'd kind of made that decision that I was going to get an Xbox, and it was just a matter of finding the right bundle and price, yeah. because at this point, like I'm early uni years, and we all know that uni students don't have any money. Um, even, even though I was living out of home, it was always still. Yeah, uh, still I, I wasn't work, still I wasn't tight. working much. Everything's still tight. Um, train trips to uni all the time. Yeah. Um, so hey, Sweeney's. Yeah. So. I, yeah, like I was struggling to get by, I'd kind of, but I'd, I'd decided, okay, I'm getting an Xbox, um, let's get some of these little games along the way that I, that I know I'm going to play when, yeah. when the time comes. So, I, yeah, I picked up a few little things, Splinter Cells and, and those sort of things. So, that when, when I finally got it, I was over the moon. It was great. Perfect. Happy. Yeah. Um, and I still, PlayStation was still my, my go-to. Like, if a game was on both, I would get it PlayStation because... Trophies finally came along and like, yep, played through. Some that made Paul's rib, the payability go up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I think it's probably what consolidated Uncharted for me as one of my favourite franchises because yeah, I, like I got it and originally when the game came out it didn't have trophies. I still played through it um, and it had its own little internal metal system. Yeah. But then when they put trophies out, I'm like. Let's see what this whole thing's about. And Uncharted was one of the first games they kind of went back and patched and added trophies into it. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I'll give it a go again. And all of a sudden, I'm ping, 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 ping. Like, ping, things are popping up everywhere. And I'm like, oh, hang on. I like this. <laughs> I love this a lot. And, like, there was some games like Assassin's Creed, the original one, that never had trophies put back in there. But, um, uh, like, it's just a case of... Like a lot of other games that came out, Assassin's Creed 2, which I was all over Assassin's Creed during the PS3 generation. I was a little bit one-eyed about it. I thought Assassin's Creed 3 was the best game of that year, of that particular year. Yeah, look, and then I woke up to the fact that it clearly wasn't. I can, I, you know what? At they this point, I painted it as a AAA plus title, and it's like it's not. Like you're just looking back on it, it's like it's not a AAA. Like two's ama- amazing. It's Brother a great, it's awesome. the great it's game. Three, the, three that, was a big they, step they back. Just, it's just not. Not oh, fantastic. They don't. They don't Mass Effect two. No. Um, That's true. But it was about. The, I think it might have even been that year where I was like, I think I'm gonna start trying this whole games writing thing a little bit. Oh, yeah. So like that particular year, like I because Cassus, our friend, was doing movie reviews, and you were like, fuck it, I'm gonna give I'm gonna, this a shot. I'm gonna try that. And it, it first review was Angry Birds. Yeah, no, I think I hated on it a bit. But um. But uh, yeah, that like, and at the time I was just doing it on Facebook. Like yeah. I just just uh, just played whatever, read the comments for review, yeah. and then <laughs> then the first comment is this twelve hundred word piece of me writing just dri- it was a summer's day. just just dribble about a video. Typical game. Melbourne weather. Summer's day turned to winter, and winter turned to autumn. 
and autumn turned to spring. Yeah, Melbourne. and it, it was lots of and and linking. It was it was pretty poor English. Um, poor no English, good. Yeah, it's me speaking. So yeah, English. so that's yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I haven't really started asking you questions as you're going on the old, I the just, old I just like kept, I did on my that other that. episode you can watch. Thing. Um, so yeah, we went PS3, you got your Xbox 360, and then, like, yeah, because you kind of nutted up, shut it Sorry up. Sorry guys, Pippa's outside, she got sin binned. Um. The Wii? No, Resistance. You said you weren't really that was, into yeah, first that was, person shooters, and that all was sudden, the sudden, f- yeah. That um, was the first game you got on PS3. It was only because, they, like, I picked up the PS3 on launch day for a thousand Australian dollars. Ridiculous. To put that into retrospect, for you Americans, that's uh, about two dollars. It's what you're going to pay for the Xbox Scorpio. No, uh, we don't know the price for that yet. Um, I don't know, probably like seven hundred US dollars or something stupid like that. It, it was, it was so. Um, like I, you know, I'd finished school at this point. I did really well at maths, so I did a pretty simple conversion. Like we should be like for what was it, five hundred and fifty five. So we should five, be looking at a five something US dollars. I should know this because it's a we bloody sh- meme. Yeah, we were looking at like seven hundred at tops, and yet Australia tax kicked in and we paid an extra three hundred dollars on top of it. It was it was absurd, but oh, um, terrible. But I, I was so like after having waited so long to get the PS2, and then having been so happy with it, I instantly believed. All right, the PS3 is going to be my number one thing. Like I want this. Yeah. It does Blu-ray. I didn't really have... It was the cheapest Blu-ray player at the time, too. Yeah, yeah. despite the how expensive the console was, yeah. yeah. It, was the, it was still the cheapest Blu-ray players Blu-ray. were like one, two, one... Yeah, stupid well, amounts. Yeah, one, two, almost one, eight. And I mean, I guess, you know, as, as gamers, that's what Fuck. a lot of people do, is that they, they like to be amongst the first to be a part of a conversation, be it about a new console, a new game, all that stuff. Like, it's it's the cool thing. Um yeah, and I, like so I, want, I wanted to be part of that PS3 conversation at the beginning. Now, Australia got it for a few months after America did, but I got it launch day for Australia. Um, spent $1,000. Oh, I, Mum agreed to help me out with it, actually. Um, yeah. So she would she would pay half. Um, but we traded in the PS2, so that knocked $300. And 10 games. Only 10 games, which was nice. Yeah. So I managed to have enough crappy PS2 games that I didn't want. SingStar and i toy and like we basically got rid of the just the worst possible games kept all the good ones on the side yeah. which was which was nice i didn't have to sacrifice any of the games that i actually loved um Paul and i went to the warehouse and brought a bunch of angry bear games for two dollars each. <laughs> naughty bear naughty bear i love naughty bear shouldn't because it's a rubbish game but i love naughty bear um but anyway uh yeah so i kind of traded in those 10 games there was some like i had to make a couple little sacrifices i got rid of a cricket game that wasn't all that good in the end but uh but i still kind of <laughs> love just because i love sport i love cricket i love footy um trading a few of those kind of crappy things just so that i could get 300 dollars off and that like that's a lot of money yeah it's so, um it was actually a pretty good deal that was game you know back when you know, you know the uk re- retailer game when they were in the country because e- eb you got the same amount off but you had to give it get had to give up an extra 10 games on top of it it was 20 games and a console really gold. 20 games whereas game, fucking hell, whereas game was squeeze where, the fucking yeah, exactly. EB GameStop, you suck. Um, but yeah, game was doing half the number of games, and that was perfect for me because I was like, I can see ten here that I want to get rid of. I don't see twenty that I want to get rid of. Yeah. Um, so that was easily done. But there wasn't this massive range of PS3 games at the time, like at launch. Mm. Um, there wasn't. I picked up Folklore, which was a Sony Japan kind of. It looked RPG to me. I kind of fell for the front cover, basically, but it, it was it was okay. It wasn't it, it wasn't super crash off. But I picked up Resistance, which because uh, I was I want a couple games to start yeah. off with. Um, Heavenly Sword, didn't you have Heavenly Sword? Heavenly Sword was a few months after. Oh, that was shit. that wasn't a launch date game. It came out a few months after. But, oh shit! Son. But um, yeah, I, I picked up Heavenly Sword, and that I really enjoyed that, especially by this stage having played God of War one and two. So kind of having a bit of a liking for that sort of game and seeing that Heavenly Sword was something similar. I was like, yep, yep, cool, done. Yep. But yeah, Resistance was the first thing I picked up and um, and played. Like, I played that in the end before Folklore because I thought, oh, this will be quick and easy. I'll kind of, I won't like it, I'll move on, whatever. Yeah. And then I really liked it. <laughs> um, and, like, I, you'd come around and give it a crack. We'd play split-swearing split um, co-op or even competitive. Um, 
and Hunter and a few other mates would come through and do the same. That that was that was really cool. Um, campaign was awesome. Uh, you know, it's it's an insomniac game, so you got wacky weapons and alt, you know weird alt fire sort of stuff. Yeah. And that alternate history thing was really interesting. Interesting to me. Yeah, as well. that was a beautiful take on what was going on. So yeah, it really got into that. Then Uncharted came along, and then pff, there we go. I just, I fell in love at that yeah. point. And I've yeah, I've been. I mean, it was kind of consolidated back in that PS1 sort of era, but by that stage, it's like, Nintendo just comes... You went back to Final Fantasy VII or something at that stage too. Yeah, because um, you could pick up the PS1 classics on the PS3, so yeah. I would replay them again every, every so often. I love it. Um, and I love, I love the fact that Final Fantasy VII now on PS4, the, to go back to it, has trophies, so nine, come on. That's why I read this before. And so um, then... And eight. But sure not. Why not? Then the Wii came out. We obviously... Everyone got another Wii. Yeah, so I picked up Twilight Princess day one. Like, I picked up the console day one. Yeah. Um, Schwinger Short. Yeah, that guy that popped... Got interviewed by Game Trailers. Jim, Sefton, you'll love that. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, I remember that. I've been waiting here for hours. Schwinger Short. Um, oh, I'm getting new Mario game with it. Yeah. Takes a jelly worm and one comes out. <laughs> good, good value that bloke. I loved him. But um, uh, yeah, look, I picked up Zelda Day One on the Wii, smashed through it as quickly as I could. It was Christmas holidays, so managed to get that thing done in like yeah. four or five days. <laughs> Just yeah. played it to death, barely moved from the couch outside of the the arm waving that I had to do. Um, Wii Sports but just like, yeah and then Wii Sports became a, it became a massive thing like you know we'd have people coming around just to play Wii Sports yeah. and everyone had to make a fucking me yeah yeah which, which no one wanted there to was, be a guest me everyone there, there was like thir- there was like 30 me's on the console this is ridiculous especially then trying to find someone because they, they don't they weren't that distinctive yeah the jawline like there was you know about four or five different jawlines so that doesn't help the hair is just it's red it's blue uh, it's you know what what you know different shades but not that many to choose from like that was it was super primitive so that process no that's not mine like my you know it, mine or, uh, or anyone else within the family was easiest spot because they were favorited so they'd be right near the top yeah but if you had a friend around where am i again and you're having to scroll through multiple pages and that that's not oh there we go yeah you're five minutes trying to sort out everyone's play before you actually start so to play the game dumb. but um yeah, Wii Sports, we spoke in the last episode, so we won't talk about it for very long. The the Dragon Ball Z, Budokai, Tenkaichi 2... We're talking uh, about how you... Uh, experience. The Shinies benefit here. How you uh, trounced children. Oh, yeah. So Wii Tennis. I went to... Very I went. I went to Game On, which was a, an exhibit they had in Melbourne. Um, just about, like, old retro video games, but... And, and kind of as you walk through the exhibit, time progressed and you, you, know, you start most primitive of stuff and then you'd make your way through Atari and Ninten- like NES, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, all that, all the way through to kind of the present day with the PS3 and the Wii and the 360 and all that. But at the same time, they were having this competition that I did, like I arrived late in the day, I actually piggybacked with um, Jay, His he was going there for a TAFE yeah. kind of excursion thing that they were doing there. Um, and I just kind of... St- I snuck in with with his group, just saying I was part of that uni, uh, that TAFE cohort. Sucked in Acme. Um, love you though. You do good work. Um, so I I got in there with them, and I was kind of walking around, and the, and yeah, towards the end of the day, that like they were having this Wii Sports tennis competition. Yeah. Um, and I said, oh yeah, why not? I'll give it a go. And what what I didn't realise it was basically just a knockout thing. So wh- whoever was the the reigning winner at at a predetermined cutoff time won like two hundred dollars or something like that, and I I walked through not knowing any context about this, just cool. I'll, yeah, sure, I'll give it a go. And I was like up against like this five or six year old, and just beat him senseless when it came to Wii Sports. Like he did not win a single point in Wii Tennis. This what I've been nineteen twenty year old kid just annihilating a little four or five year old bring him to tears and then we, then it turned out that I was the one that was uh, like the cutoff was just after that match so I walk out with $200 and this kid walks away in tears with nothing 
it's still kind Absolute of funny. Scum. It's it is it's it's horrible, but it, it's still pretty funny. <laughs> it's, Absolute to this scum. day, it's you still hear pretty it funny. here, ladies and gentlemen. Absolute scum. Your host, Paul James. So, um, but yeah, like we've kind of covered those three in that generation a little bit. You know, yeah. I, I've got this massive, massive library of PS3 games. Then the war came. The war to end all wars. 360 versus... Oh, no, sorry. X, X-Bone versus PS4. Oh, look, I picked them both up on their respective launch days, but it was always about PlayStation. Xbox had done so much yeah, damage exactly. with the... You'd eventually gotten over this, all this. Like, I know Gears helped you ease up, but, like, you actually gotten over, like... Ever oh, that that, stu- that that stupid child! No, that that childish thing was that was that was dumb. Like, it, uh, you know, as uh, being a fair if, boy is being a fair boy. You can't help it. Uh, uh, you know, know, ultimately the right thing to do, oh, and it doesn't oh, matter whether you're oh, still, oh, whether you're a reformed fanboy or whether you still are. The right and logical thing is why not have it? Like, unless it's a console exclusive, which you can't help. It's made by Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo or whatever. Games should be available for anyone, regardless of the system they play. It's Ideally, not, it's not always possible for financial reasons or whatever it happens to be, but I shouldn't be upset at someone because they, like, to use the Final Fantasy 13 example, I should not be upset at someone because I get to enjoy this game on a PS3 and they also get to enjoy it on their 360. But they weren't enjoying it because they had to change the disc every fucking five seconds. Yeah, they, they did because su- sucked in, you had a DVD, the uh, games on DVD and we had blu-ray but yeah so they got, yeah they, good good job oh, you know, they got the inferior that. version of an inferior final fantasy game hd fucking death what a lot of shit <laughs> yeah hd dvd that was that was a smart decision still that was like that even that to go back to that that was a big shock because when it came to any sort of media in the past be it vhs and beta or dvd and whatever the hell that was up against um it was always weirdly the porn industry that was like wherever that whatever platform they decide to align themselves with no like i've read so much about this before the uh, before, when ps3 was coming along so whatever basically platform they decide they want to align themselves with was ultimately the platform that was successful vhs being the biggest most prominent example of that even though beta but then, better quality yeah exactly like it didn't matter which one was better because Lazy that's because that's where that. the porn industry decided to go so <laughs> can we stop saying so they all oh, no fine but like the- that the that's where they decided to go but it, but it didn't but then that didn't play out that way with with blu-ray and hd dvd in the end gaming actually yeah but what, the point was, was the main also factor blocked also ba- majority of the studios backed blu-ray and you've a lot of films think- film and game studios did and everyone thought with sorry and oh, this is the last time i use the word but with the porn industry going towards hd dvd there was still this common school of thought out there that HD DVD was going to get up because it had yeah. that backing. But then you also and had like drive, a lot of drive so much traffic and money. But in the end, for some there was reason, a lot of it didn't like apply those this time. entertainment companies like TDK and Samsung, is that all kind of looking at that? Like, what are we going to do? And it, I, I swear, it must have been cheaper to build Blu-ray. Yeah, I'd imagine Sony was maybe taking a smaller cut out of each disc. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like, I mean. You know, that kind of, I guess, diverts a little bit from what we were talking about, but, um, yeah, it would, it would have sucked for anyone, in my eyes, would have sucked for anyone who had to play, you know, your Final Fantasy thirteens or anything else that was over multiple discs and having to exchange discs. Like, for me, I was like, I got over that when I finished playing Final Fantasy IX. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the the last game I had to play where I had to exchange discs. Um Blip. Because I think, I don't even recall any PS2 games that I played where I had to change discs along the way. There might have been one or two, but it's I'm a little bit blank. I've gone blank for that at the moment. And PS3, everything fit on that Blu-ray disc, no problem. <laughs> but then when I went to go play my 360, Mass Effect, for example, uh, Mass Effect 2, for example, changed discs or... or oh, that, yeah. That sort of thing. That final mission, yeah, the suicide mission. Yeah, it was basically just for the final sequence. You had to change discs because yeah. it just, they couldn't fit any more on it. Um, so clever. And uh, yeah, there's a few other examples like that, I'm sure. Some of those RPGs I was talking about before, your last remnants and those sort of things over multiple discs, but I was looking at it going, I don't have to do that on my PlayStation. I'm sitting pretty and laughing, de- looking down at you and laughing. Yes. And I, ha- I had to get off my high horse and so, I'm, I'm glad I did because- So you, yeah, you jumped on the boat. 
So I, again, my, going into it, still knowing that if there's a game on both, I'm going to go PlayStation because at this point, I'd built this affinity for trophies. Yeah. And you know, you'll hear me in most episodes of Patch that I just. He's I'm a, trophy a, I'm a massive trophy whore. Um, so if they were in physical reality, Paul would be like melting them down. I've like got, I've got thousands and thousands bed. of them, so um, they'd be filling this room right now. Thousands and thousands, he says. Of trophies. Let's, let's go look at his trophies. Um, I'll bring it up while we're going. But... No, don't bring it up. Because <laughs> it's basically just the first thing I look at every day on the way. Oh, he does. Yep. He must. No. <laughs> okay, so, um, so... Has there been anything... Oh, there, like, there's a few examples when it comes to the 360 where that wasn't the case. So, for example, Borderlands. Like, I was first introduced to uh, Borderlands by Jay on the 360. Yeah. And he was playing it there, so I went and played it on the 360. Yeah, I guess that's that, that's um, kind of that thing that happens, though, isn't it? Like, my friend likes his X-Bone more than he likes his PS4, but he, like, had to buy Mass Effect. Yeah, and Mass, Mass Effect's the, another example that I picked up the original... PS4, because everyone's playing it on PS4 so it's like if I want to I love multiplayer why the fuck would I well yeah like I, I saw very quickly with Borderlands that it was a better experience to play with other people so like well and he was uh, he, you, the two of you were the my two kind of closest gaming mates uh, you know like in terms of people I could just pick up and play a game with on PlayStation or Xbox or whatever and both of you only had a 360 so yeah. like, well that's where I'm going to have to go for that particular game Mass Effect's another example where the first game only came out to 360 for the longest time eventually that changed but this was years and years after the fact like yeah. Mass Effect 3 was a, like, yeah it was a trilogy they released at the end yeah um, before the first one finally came to PlayStation 3 um, so you just had to have that I, I played the entire thing on there and then because I'm a tool I bought the trilogy digitally for my PS3 and I intend to go back and get it for trophies and nothing more just a quick hint on that one you can get the Shadow Broker it comes with it backed in straight achievement, away achievement like defeat the Shadow Broker on like hardcore or something like that what you can do is you can like whittle his health down to like next to nothing change the difficulty over into hardcore finish him off and it, the trophy pops oh cool so I'll there you go you have, but there is an achievement it's now like yeah we know playing it on hard without change or harder without changing the difficulty to the whole Shadow oh, yeah, okay. DLC but that's one thing anyway it's completely off topic but just so that you know you're not yeah pulling hairs I'll break the controllers I, I fully intended and I mentioned it in past episodes that I fully intended to play one through to three before Andromeda came out I think I got about two thirds of the way through one and just ran out of time because life got in the way yeah, and that like that's button, that's yeah. been one of the one of the things I've kind of because for years and years and years it was like no commitments. Um, Mum and dad were fantastic when I was still kind of younger um, with school and stuff. Like, don't worry, just put your time and effort into school. Make sure you you're doing everything right there, and we'll cover everything for you. So like, don't worry about expenses for anything at all. We'll pay it for you. It's fine. Which meant like I'd you know I'd do all my school study. I'd come home and I'd do a couple of hours of study or whatever it is. And then I'd play a game, or if it was say a Friday, Saturday, and you know, at this point, you know, kind of year eleven and twelve, and eighteenth, eighteenth birthday is starting to happen. So I'd go to something like that, and they'd cover everything for me, like they'd drive me out, they'd do whatever, whatever I wanted, as long as I put my time and effort in study. So, like the game, like I played so many games because I'd finish my study and just like if it was Monday through Thursday where I didn't have commitments, if I wasn't playing footy or anything like that, mm. I would just binge for hours and hours on whatever game. And then I had to learn, you know, in that kind of PS3-ish era, and especially nowadays, now that I've got my own place, I'm going to have to accept the fact that there's going to be some nights where I don't get to play games at all. I don't, like, I'm just going to have to be able to step back and do it. Now, that, that took a you while. You mean to... accept some nights? Like, not weeks? Nights? Oh, no, like, there have been periods where it's been multiple weeks where, I, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to. Oh, okay. Um, I fucking say, dude. Well, look, I mean, to, to swap lives. Most most recently, I had all so, this time, and I still can't fucking play. Games. Most recently, and this is not weeks that I'm talking about. This is, in fact, just two nights I'm talking about. But um, like Angelica had gone off on a camp. You and I've been talking about before we went recording, but she went off on a camp, and I had this intention to just binge game for hours and hours. And like that's going to keep me preoccupied while she's away. No worries, cool, because I'm going to be sitting on my own on the house in the house for a couple of nights, and instead. Like, I mean, you and I recorded your episode, uh, your episode of this interview, but otherwise I didn't have that have that much on, and yet I didn't get to play a single game in that entire time. I'm like, 
okay, cool. I've got to deal with that. Like, it's, it, it, it took a while for me to kind of get my head around the fact that it doesn't need to be number one priority anymore. I still love doing it. And if there's an opportunity for me to sit down and, and play, I will. And I've still found myself every now and then get totally consumed by certain games. Like, I, there have been times where I've been sitting here um, total, you're recording this for her benefit, aren't you? Who? The, the, this is I'm just doing a one second video this, a day. This is going to come back to bite me at some point. Um, Perception, bro. So, uh, look, uh, you know, that's going to mean that you've totally ruined my train of thought here. Well done. Thanks to you guys. Um, yeah, look, it, it means that some, I, I just acknowledge that some nights I'm not going to be able to play games or something like that, and I'll, and I'll deal with it, and it's good. Um, but it'll always be a big part. I, I want to continue what I'm doing with the games writing and the games recording, what we're doing right now. Damo's trying his best to screw it up, but um, so like we'll, we'll see how that all comes along. But what else have you got for me? To keep you on your toes, throw things back at you now. Well, <laughs> there is one question. Like, uh, so you obviously talk about JRPGs thing. Oh, you have never brought up anything to do with fighters? Not a fighter fan? No. Nah. I, I'm just not dexterous enough. I can't like Smash is different. Smash is really anyone fighting, can kind yeah. of. Uh, I don't think it's like it's like what Mario Kart is to races. Yeah, where you can just pick it up and you can fumble your way through and make it work. And I feel like I've gotten pretty decent at Smash, but not you know what you see in some of the pros that like I, I would just be scoffed at by any of them. But like I, I can hold I can hold my own if I'm you play if Smash. I'm playing against you or J oh I'll, fuck I'll, off I'll take you. Ladies and gentlemen, no, no, but it's, we're, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have, we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to record a let's play at some point. The two of us in this big. It's it's now set in stone. The smash showdown. Um, um, but like I remember you, myself, Jake. We used to have those sort of things, and I still remember oh, yeah, there was a couple. Was, of, I went. Mate, you you organised a big nice. night with a whole bunch of your mates. Jay wasn't there for this one, but you organised a big night with one of your, uh, with some of your mates. It was Smash for the Wii. No, it's yes. a brawl. And I walked in and uh, like I'd come from work at this point. I was doing pizza deliveries. Uh, so I'd come from I'd work be. and I walked in late and people had been playing a little bit, just kind of fooling around before the, the the main event started, which was a big full on, like you'd planned a proper league and how it was all going to break down. And I, Paul and, being a one trick pony. Well, I only, yeah, Yoshi was my default, but I walked in and people, you know, people were great about it. Like Paul, you, you know, have a little bit of time, get yourself kind of warmed up, I guess, more than anything else, have a couple of matches. And, and so I was playing. I was sat there and oh. waited for you to begin. So well, they scoped out the end. No, no. So so it was basically a case of um, like I played against a few different people there, and I smashed them all. Like it was just wiped them straight off the thing, and it was quickly recognised because when um, when we started the proper match, the other three people I was against didn't care about one another. I was the target. Because so I got you were belted the big out. fucking Yoshi and you did the fucking did, there's only so many moves you could do. That and you were I think you I think you were actually against against the two guys that won the end. Yeah, I think so, but like I You were against, I took, him to, against the, I took him to the clock at the beginning. And Matt and Matt fucking knows how to counter. Like I, that's I, a counter No, game. but like when I because remember this warm up was one on one. Yeah. Like I was dealing I was annihilating all one on one. Yeah. It was fine. But then when we started, you know, yeah, when you actually played, you all played for, against you know, Matt and all for one, one for all sort of thing. It wasn't that at all. It was three v one, <laughs> and then once I was out, then they all turn on one another. I'm like this is this is bullshit. It's because yeah, you can't, I you just got so fucking. I cracked the sets. <laughs> I've been here for like 20 minutes, everyone's ganging up on me already, and this is crap. <laughs> Paul left in a hurry. No, I didn't leave. No, I, I stuck it out. Went um, home, got out the security footage of him beating up a six year old at <laughs> Wii Tennis, and Dad got him chuffed again. Um, yeah, and no, I was pretty uh, happy at that point. So, we, I think we can't go any further with. Well, at least to where I am these days, I guess, if anything else, with the record, like not in terms of the consoles. We're going to talk about five top games. We're going to say five top games. No, we're not going to do that. Any memorable? Because I could do that. You know, because you've got games that make it into your top things. But is there any games that you just kind of like have a little? You know, there's a little little that, that I perhaps should that like shine in your light. Did you know? Like guilty pleasures or? Well, you can say guilty pleasure if you want. That could be a term. But you know, I, just, actually, I, you won't, that, I won't talk about guilty pleasures because go, go check out this week's Player 2 podcast because that's that's a topic that's going on this week. So keep yeah. an old flame for, you know. Harvest Moon's definitely one of those things that I, yeah, I could always, I could always go back to it. games, but like it's just kind of... 
Yeah. Well, it's like Harvest Moon is not one I'd throw anywhere near my top ten. Yeah. Like I, I love them, but it's not like with all the Final Fantasies and Zeldas and Mario's and Uncharted and how we didn't even talk about The Last of Us or The Witcher Three, which are like two of my favourite games of the last ten years. Yeah. That's um, but like when you you have know, got all that sort of company, Harvest Moon doesn't make that sort of cut. But it is one that I could like, especially the original and two on the Game Boy Color. I could pick those two up any time and just have hours and hours of fun and I and I don't like yeah it probably fits under that guilty pleasure sort of tag but like I could do it any time and yeah. I'd be super happy it's simple it's nice and um like you know where most games are you know somehow framed around violence of some sort it's that sort of game that if I've had a rough day at work or or school back in the day or whatever it happened to be I could do that and it was a nice it had this instantly calming effect of I'm just ripping up vegetables and I'm sending them off and I'm getting money back and that's helping me to get more chickens and sheep in the farm and and like just I like I felt like I was always achieving something because you're always building up the farm and it's becoming more and more profitable and like it was it just always left this really good feeling inside that you can get from slashing slicing and dicing hundreds of enemies but it's it's a, like I don't know the achievement the feeling of achievement thing was slightly different for me fair enough like I can, I can see something that's technically te- like this is actually possible. I, mean, I don't ever want to be a farmer or anything like oh, that. Oh no, I was gonna say you know. But like this is actually a real life thing. Like, what kind of a ever comes come to Paul's uh, been there profitable done. farm. Yeah, I'll, he'll be there. Little, little chickens, sheep, cows, He's and that's it. The cows will get day, sick every day. now and then. I got to cater to them and try and hit on like one of the little local farmer girls that work at the shops. You try and get a wife and you. would build a family and blah 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 been there that's done pretty it. much how kids get made people yeah blah, just, blah, 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 blah. yeah blah 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 baby <laughs> <laughs> thank um, god there's no women around here otherwise they'd be oh, crazy oh they, those so stories. yeah the, um, um so i think i could about wrap it up I, i'm gonna i'm gonna do your wrap up for you yeah uh, we would love to hear your your gaming stories if you know, you'd like to share them in the comments below. You can like, subscribe, and share. Would be kind of great if you're watching this on YouTube or the P2 site, uh, whatever is floating your boat. Um, you can find Paul on Twitter at Paul James P2 and the Player Two. Oh, Player Two AU for the the play the site's Twitter handle as well. And you can find Paul living in Gisborne on. I'm not in Gisborne anymore. Well, you ruined that joke, so yes. fuck you. Um, and you can find me at Tacos Talks on Instagram, Twitter, probably Facebook too. I Make think. sure to visit the website, player2.net.au, for all the awesome written content. Yeah, that's it. Um, but yeah, share your stories. It's it, The gaming community can only get bigger and better if we talk. And you know, that's what we do here, and hopefully you do it too now. That is another episode of Storytime. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm using that little hand for any, any of these sort of things. So I've done the one with Angelica. We've done yours. Now we've done mine. We'll do Jay's. You'll see Jay's soon enough, I'm sure. Um, I like that little story time thing, and we can kind of just make it whatever we want. Sure, maybe I'm ripping off Penny Arcade and what they do with every single packs with story time, but what of it? Sue me. Don't sue him. See you later. Bye. <laughs>